Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 27. Therefore, son of man, we've been talking about the history of Israel and hasn't been too good. The men of Israel have come to Ezekiel inquiring the Lord, and the Lord's like, okay. Tell them the history. Tell them how my people have failed. You know, Stephen does that. He tells them the history, tells them the truth, and he gets chewed out and stoned. Son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me, in that they have committed a trespass against me. Trespass is, is to cross the line. You know, you'll see on fences, no trespasses. You don't go over there. The children of Israel have. When I had brought them into the land of Israel, for the which I lifted up my hand to give it to them, the land, they saw every high hill, all the thick trees, Christmas tree, and they offered their, their sacrifices. You mean the gifts? And there they presented the provocation of their offerings. Provocation is to excite anger. Everything they're doing now in the land is angering God. There also they made their sweet savior. And poured out their drink offerings. That was supposed to be at the temple, not on the high hills, not before the tree. Drink offering. You mean you watered the tree? Eggnog, Yule log, it's that time of season. Then said I unto them, God speaking, what is the high place whither you go? And the name thereof is called Bama, which means high place, unto this day. They named it. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye polluted? After the man of your father. There's a pollution. We talk about air, water, pollution. We talk about El Nemo, climate change. But we don't talk about being polluted from God. The churches are polluted. We're rich. We're wonderful. We're great. We don't have no need of nothing. The manner of your fathers and commit ye whoredoms after their abomination. What two great words? Whoredoms and abomination. You know, the tree lovers in verse 28. When you offer your gifts, <laughs> now that's a sacrifice. And even Jesus said in the gospel, with a gift. What's the gift? It's the, it's the animal. It's the fine flour. It's the meat offering. Today is your presents you bought Black Friday. Better kept the receipt. When you make your sons to pass through the fire, that's murder. Molech. Today they do it in the womb. Then they did it after the children were born. You pollute yourself with your with all your idols. So the Catholic Church and their aids to worship is a polluted religion. Your money is a pollution of God because on the American money are dead men. You're not to be worshipping images. You're not to be worshipping the dead. Franklin, Jefferson, Washington, Lincoln, Roosevelt. 
They're dead. Mount Rushmore, they're dead. It's an idol. It's a pollution of what God made those rocks. And you polluted it by putting man's images in face. Even unto this day. And shall I be inquired, this is start, start of the verse, shall I be inquired of, by you, O house of Israel? As I live, saith the Lord, I will not be inquired by you. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all. All this abomination, all this whoredom, all this, I got, one day it'll be all eliminated. We will be as the heathen. That's what the churches are today. Your Christmas, your Easter is heathen practices out of Egypt, Babylon, Assyria, Rome, and Greek. As the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand, with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. That's the second advent of Jesus Christ. I will bring you out from the people. Ezra, Nehemiah, Second Advent, and will gather you out of the countries wherein you scattered, with a mighty hand, with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out. That's Second Advent. There was no fury when Ezra and Nehemiah brought them back into the land. They just got on their caravans and went. I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. Priscilla Petra. And there will I plead with you face to face. Face to face I shall behold him. That's the Jewish people. Like as I plead with your fathers in the wilderness, history of the land of Egypt. So will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. So when you look at the pleading of Egypt in Exodus, you see these plagues. And when you look at God pleading with Israel in the tribulation, you see almost the same plagues. And just to make sure Moses shows up and Elijah. I will cause you to pass under the rod. Let's see, well, what, what's that psalm say? And thy rod and thy staff shall comfort me. That's a Jewish psalm of Jews in the tribulation period. I'll make thee lie down. I'll bring you into green pastures, Silipetra. And then when Jesus Christ picks them up and brings them into the promised land. That rod is Satan, the devil, the Antichrist. I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. That's that new covenant. I will purge you. I mean, excuse me. I will purge out from among you the rebels. Second Advent. And them that transgress against me, second advent, I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, who gather the nations together. 
and they shall not enter the land of Israel. They go into the they go into hell. And then again, number twenty-five, you shall know that I am the Lord. How do you know that he's the Lord? You're not going in the promised land. You're not going in the millennium. You're going into hell. As for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, go ye. Here's a go. Serve ye everyone his idol. And hither after also. If you will not hearken unto me, well, look at God's name. He could go after your idols. But pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts. And with your God says, listen, there's a free will. Go, go ahead and follow your idols. But don't you dare follow those idols in my name and in my sacrifices and my gifts and my feasts. You know, they were taking God's feast and serving the idols. Just like the church. The church takes the heathen feast. They don't take the Jewish feast. When's the last time you heard of a Baptist church? We're going to take the feast of tabernacles. We're going to take the feast of the Passover. Is it not Christ our Passover? Why don't they celebrate the Passover feast? Wouldn't it be the time of the fast order? Wouldn't that be a great night to have the Lord's Supper? Wouldn't that need be a great time that on this night, 2,000 years ago, Jesus sat down with the 12? As we break the bread, as we, the, the wine of the grape juice happened 2,000 years ago, at this time that Jesus Christ is going to break the fellowship with the disciples and he's going to head off to the cross. Why don't we celebrate in the churches the Pentecost? This is the time when Peter met with all the Jewish people as the nation after Jesus Christ went up to glory. How many Baptist Bible people know about the Feast of the Ingathering? The Feast of Unleavened Bread. How many of them know about the seven feasts and the three that were prioritized that the males were to go to Jerusalem? How many? Oh, but can the Baptist tell me about Easter? Can the, the Baptist tell me about Veterans Day? Can the Baptist tell me about Christmas? You know what I learned today? As I go about a new study, the Feast of Tabernacles is the Jewish Thanksgiving after their crops. It is a feast that happened at the end of the harvest. Sound familiar? And it is a feast of celebration and giving thanks to God Jehovah. You would think that the church would celebrate that rather than a Thanksgiving by George Washington. And I've read his diaries. There's like 10 volumes. Very rarely did I read about that man go to church. Martha went off with the church. I let the slaves go off to church. And on church, I bought some sheep and I bought, I read the 10 volumes or whatever it was. Took them out of Norwich Library in Connecticut and I read the diaries of George Washington looking to see what kind of Christian he was. And you would go forth to the Christian today, forsake not the assembly of the saints called to call the church. And you would say our great founding fathers, you would say the same thing to George Washington. Why are you forsaking the assembly of the, of the, of the church? I don't like when Stolly does that. 
They were taking the Jewish feast and giving it to idols and fallen gods. And that was angering God. You know, the Catholic Church has the feast. You know, Israel North had feast and counterfeit of the real feast. Jeroboam. As for you, O house of Israel, Amen. You know, as for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, go ye and serve everyone his idols. That's, but don't pollute God. There is a free will. You have to choose right there. You're going to choose your idols or you're going to choose God. What's the New Testament for the Christian? You can't serve God or mammon. That's the same principle. I wonder where Paul got that from. For in my holy mountain, Jerusalem, in the mountain of the height of Israel, saith the Lord God, there shall be the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me, millennium. There will I accept them and will be and will we will I require their offerings, millennium. And first fruit of your oblations, millennium. Oh, gee, you're going to have to tithe in the millennium with all your holy things. The holy things were the first. The first of your sons, the first of your cattle, the first of your sheep, the first of your crops. I will accept you and your sweet Savior when I bring you out from the people. Second Advent, Millennium. I will gather you out of the countries where I have, where you have been scattered. I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. And the heathen will be in the Millennium. And number 26, you shall know I am the Lord. How shall you know I am the Lord? Jesus Christ seated King of kings, Lord of lords, Jehovah in Jerusalem with the temple there, with the Levites, with the 12 tribes of Israel, with the, the 12 apostles, with the Christians, with the Jews, in the new covenant, and the, and the heathen, and the Jehovah witness out in hell saying, well, I thought he was not God. You shall know that I am the Lord, I shall bring you in the land of Israel into a country. They're going to know that God is Jesus and Jesus is God when they see him on horseback we carry them into Jerusalem as Joshua did. That's why in Acts chapter 7 it says Jesus and it doesn't say Joshua. Check your King James Bible. Many King James Bibles got that wrong. Imagine that, King James Bible being wrong. Check your Acts chapter 7. Make sure it says Jesus. My hand to give it to your fathers. And there shall ye remember your ways, your doings, wherein ye have been defiled. And you shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for all the evils that you have committed. They're going to remember what they've done wrong. And there's going to be repentance and there's going to be sorrow in the millennium. You shall know that I am the Lord. That's another one that does it. Number 26. When I have brought you into my namesake. Gee, that wonder what that name will be. Jehovah. Jehovah saves. Jesus. Not according to your wicked ways. Not according to your corrupt doings, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. He's going to wash him. He's going to make him clean. That's kind of funny. Does, does that really sound like that God's all finished with the Jews? Because what we read is not Ezra and Nehemiah. Because Ezra and Nehemiah, Israel did not get back in the land. Judah did. Why 
Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward the south. Look south. Drop thy word toward the south. And prophesy against the forest of the south field. <laughs> Preach to the forest. <laughs> Say to the forest of the south, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God. Behold, I will kindle a fire in thee. And the Bible says in tribulation, one third of the trees are burned. It shall devour every green tree, Christmas tree. Oh, Tannenbaum, oh, Tannenbaum. God will bomb you with fire. You won't be able to set you in your living room. Right next to the witch's broom of Halloween. Your Christmas tree will no longer be green. It will be set on fire. And every dry tree, you didn't water your Christmas tree. Flaming fire shall not be quenched. That's the tribulation period. Or if you don't water your Christmas tree. You know how many house fires happen around Christmas because you didn't water your tree? Or your dog and cat ate, drank the water from the tree? All faces from the south. Didn't I wish he stopped it about Christmas? I'll stop Christmas about December twenty seventh. And all faces from the and then I'll pick up on Easter. And all faces from the south to the north shall be burned therein. And all flesh shall see that I, the Lord, had kindled it, and it shall not be quenched. Now watch this remark. Then said I, O Lord God, they, Israel, say unto me, Ezekiel, does he not speak parables? Remember, remember we started all this and, and God said to speak a, a riddle in a, in a parable? I mean a proverb? He didn't say anything about parables. And they're taking what God said to Ezekiel. That's just a parable. It ain't going to happen. Oh, you wait to the tribulation period, my friend. It would be remarkable how God will bring up all this in the tribulation period. Oh, it is written. It is written. 